In 1910, when the boat was launched at Dirk Booth's shipbuilders in Garrisolice, it was fitted with a mast and sails. It had its cargo hold and a cabin at the back, and it sailed the waterways of the Netherlands, moving sand, gravel, rocks, etc. by harnessing only the power of the wind. In 1930, the boat's sails were removed and a Cromhout single-cylinder diesel engine was installed, which meant the boat was not depending on the weather and could operate continuously, thus increasing profit. The Cromhout engine provided propulsion right to the end of its commercial life in 1964. When the boat was purchased by Chris Cable in 1964, the Cromhout engine, this simple and reliable engine, continued as the boat's only propulsion until the engine was replaced in the 1970s by its current DAF 475 diesel engine. With the installation of the DAF engine, the boat was rigged for sailing and renamed De Vrau Linda. Over the 45 years, De Vrau Linda has not changed its propulsion systems. Today, as the new owner, I've decided to replace the mast. Most Dutch barges today are moved under diesel power only, but I have a long-term plan to harness renewable energy to propel the boat. So I purchased a sailing Dutch barge as a start point to create a zero emissions boat as it was on the day it was launched. So this episode is about my efforts to achieve this and my future plans in this regard. In September 2019, De Vrau Linda had its mast removed and the replacement mast is currently being made. The old mast had its counterweight bolted on and Nico cut it off and then set it to one side. Now, rather than attaching the counterweight onto the new mast as it was, Rob Cable suggested the lead should be melted down into smaller bars and stacked on the end of the mast like this. This means that if in the future the counterweight needs to be removed, it can be dismantled by hand and removed without the use of a crane. This would be valuable if the boat needed to get under a low bridge. The counterweight could be removed to lower the air draft, as the lead counterweight is the tallest point on the boat when the mast is in its lowered position. I got to work with a variety of cutting tools and it took me many days to break it all down. It would seem the lead was poured into a steel box and with steel running through the middle of the block for added anchorage. Along the way I discovered there was serious corrosion on the steel holding the counterweight onto the mast, and it was only a matter of time before it fell off. This highlighted another reason to convert to a stackable solution, for future safety inspections. Once the lead was broken down into smaller pieces, it was stored safely away. Meanwhile, Tice worked on the carving of the mast while I focused on the engine. The engine is 45 years old at least, and it hasn't run much in five years. I'm told that Chris Cable looked after the engine and it was always professionally serviced. However, it is now very smoky. At the time of filming this, I've learnt a lot about this engine over many months. And what I'm about to say is a distilled version of my journey so far. I put a new battery in and reconditioned the alternator. I have since found that the engine's electrics are draining the battery when the engine is off. So the battery has to be disconnected as soon as the engine is turned off to maintain its charge. I suspect these corroded dials are part of the problem and need to be replaced. The good news is that the wiring used is of excellent quality, so it won't be difficult to fix. The smoke coming from the engine is unburnt fuel, as you can see, so this would be a number of problems. Worst case scenario is worn piston rings and resulting in poor compression. This would require an engine rebuild. The boat was sitting unused for years and was then moved to Harlingen when I surveyed and purchased the boat. The diesel the engine burned that day was seriously contaminated. The diesel was removed from the tank and cleaned out and refilled with fresh diesel. I added diesel detergent to clear out any crap in the fuel system and combustion chamber. This made a small improvement. Next was to have a look at the injectors themselves to see if the fuel was getting to the combustion chamber. So I whipped them out with ease and brought them down to Motorin Revisi de Boer in Snake. 
These guys were great and tested my injectors right in front of me. The injectors were in good working order. I bought new compression washers, various gaskets and reinstalled them onto the engine. But the big change to the exhaust was when I set the valve clearance. On this engine it's 5 millimeters, which is a huge gap by today's standards. The settings were all over the place and this made a big difference once the engine was warmed up. Compression can be lost through the intake valves, exhaust valves, the injector cups and piston rings. A compression test followed by a comprehensive cylinder leak test will confirm any ongoing compression issues. Unfortunately, that was as far as I got before the world went into lockdown. But the guys at Motor and Revisi de Boer said that the most likely culprit for the smoke was the fuel pump. The CAV fuel pump wears out its diesel return valves. As the fuel is pushed out of the pump under pressure to the injectors, there is a return valve to stop that fuel losing pressure or sending the fuel back into the pump between squirts. The failure of these valves would mean the pump has to pressurise the entire fuel line as well as the injector instead of just the injector. These valves wear and reduce the amount of fuel getting to the combustion chamber, reducing the quality of the burn. During this time in lockdown, I found a manual for the engine online and I learned a lot about the fuel pump. And there are many things I needed to know, but didn't. For example, the fuel pump has its own oil lubricating system and this has to be changed. The engine has a cold start setting. I knew nothing about. But more importantly, the fuel pump has a mechanical timing adjuster that needs to be reset at certain service intervals, all of which could result in poor combustion. So as soon as it's safe to travel to the Netherlands, I will be removing the pump and sending it to Motor and Revisa de Boer in Snake, so it can get serviced. The purpose of all of this is to prepare the boat for crossing the English Channel at some point in the future. Thinking further ahead though, a DAF 475 engine was used in trucks and buses in the 1970s and were famous for having rather poor emissions. So I want to get the engine's emissions improved as best as I can in the short term, but plan for its ultimate replacement. The 475 in DAF 475 is because it's a 4.76 litre six-cylinder diesel engine. So from an efficiency and environmental point, I'm thinking of converting to electric propulsion. This would return the boat to being a zero emission craft as it was in 1910. But with the added advantage of electric propulsion, through perhaps solar charge battery bank with a diesel generator as backup. Maybe. The mast is still not finished due to the global lockdown. And there are other difficulties. Finding a lead foundry in the Netherlands to make lead bars in small batches is proving impossible. But Thijs, the carpenter, has told me he will look into making the lead bars himself to get the mast completed. In the meantime, um, look after yourselves during the lockdown and thank you for watching. Subscribe if you wish. There will be more videos coming at some point. And uh, give it a like and thank you very much.